Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a great and wonderful day. Well, as we all know, Portland, the great city of Portland, is now, um... It's, it's collapsing. It's It's been doing this for right now. Businesses closing left and right. Uh, murder and mayhem in the streets. And a whole bunch of ODs. Now, the police commissioner is saying something to not call 911. I know you think it's crazy. You think it's it's saying, but this is, this is what's been happening right now. We have this right here from the Daily Mail. The Portland Public Safety Commissioner warns people do not call 911 unless they're at risk of death as woke Demo Democratic-run city runs to cope with a slew of ODs. Portland's Public Safety Commissioner has told people to not call 911 unless they're at risk of death as Democrat-run city continues to struggle with rampant drug use and a slew of overdoses. Commissioner Randy Gonzalez told locals that his emergency service hotline was overwhelmed with people calling about members of the public public suffering fentanyl overdoses. Oregon decriminalized hard drug use three years ago. As a result, he urged people to only call 911 in a life or death emergency as it was a reveal paramedics have been called to deal with eight suspected fentanyl overdoses in the city's once Tony Peril district. Portland's neighborhoods have been overrun with crime, homelessness, and drugs since the pandemic. And despite pouring funds into relief initiatives, little change is occurring on the streets of the city. Well, that's because a lot of the things that's been happening so far in Portland is that the uh, uh, that is happening in Portland is that none of the prosecutors or none of the DAs are putting people behind bars. They're being released very early, and they're out to... It's going to seem like nothing's being done, which nothing is. It's just... It's just the fact that, well, <laughs> they can't do anything. Uh, Commissioner Rene Gonzalez wore on X, on X Today, our 911 system is getting hammered this morning with a multiple person incident, multiple overdoses in Northwest Park Box. Please do not call 911 except in an event of life or death emergency on cr or crime in progress or a chance of a pamper handing suspect. The warning came hours after eight people who were seen snorting cocaine suffered overdoses within just blocks of one another. It's understood that the cocaine they were ta taking was likely laced with fentanyl. Port and Fire and Rescue confirmed that eight people overdosed near Northwest Park Avenue and the West Burnside Street just, just after 10 a.m. Monday. Four people were rushed to the hospital to be treated for the overdose. The remaining four had Narcan and an opioid overdose several medicine administered at the scene. According to the Portland Police Bureau, there were a total of 104 homicides in the city between August 2022 and August 2023. The majority occurred downtown. In the same time period, there were 529 arrests made for drug and narcotic offenses. The number of murders in Portland since January currently sits at 59. In July, Portland opened its first stage in Homeless Park, and shocking images showed drug abuse and illegal campsites continuing to plague its streets. Oregon is the largest city in the midst of a devastating humanitarian crisis, with its homeless population up almost 50% since 2018 to more than 5,000. The uber woke local government is spinning its hopes of reversing the trend on a raft of costly new shelters. Distressing images showed rows of disabled tents taking over the streets, while the left behind inhabitants openly abused hard drugs on sidewalks. Around 2,000 of the city's homeless population are sheltered, leaving approximately 3,000 sleeping rough, according to official data. The crisis has been fueled by the pandemic and a 2018 court ruling that, may, that meant cities across much of the West, including Portland, could not prevent people from sleeping outside if a alternative shelter wasn't available. Public scenes of flagrant drug abuse were sent to, into overdrive after Oregon voters approved 2020 ballot measure that effectively decriminalized possession of hard drugs like meth and opioids. In a bid to end the crisis, Portland has approved $27 million in funding for three temporary alternative sites, which plans for a further three to be funded by Mutama County. I think that's how you pronounce it. My apologies if I pronounced it incorrectly. While passing a ban on daytime camping, which came into effect on July 7th. And Portland residents are more than fed up, as local and state politicians duke it out as recent polls show they want the issues resolved quickly. In a poll by Port People for Portland, a conservative advocacy group, more than two-thirds of voters wanted to clear the streets by forcing drug addicts into rehab. Three-quarters of voters called the city's homelessness an out-of-control disaster. I mean, this is what you get when you vote for very far-left and woke policies. I don't see where this is, um, 
anybody else's fault besides you guys yourselves. You voted for this mess. Now you have this type of suffer. But now, <laughs> now you have the actual commissioner due to your woke policies, due to your woke decisions, due to your woke stupid, uh, stupid ideas. You now have your uh, police commissioner, safety commissioner saying, don't call 911 unless you're literally going to die. So that means if you're not going to die or somebody's, you know, threatening you or somebody's, you know, within the vicinity, you don't, you don't call 911 because they're going to think, think, think that as a, as an annoyance. So yeah, if you, if somebody's trying to break into your home or whatever, please don't call us. We will not help you because, you know, you're not really at threat of death or anything. So this is the reality of what you happens when you vote far left, you vote for these world policies, and now all these consequences have come up. And I don't know what to say, really. It just seems that uh, you guys are suffering from your consequences. And, um, may it be. Hopefully that things go well, but uh, it doesn't seem going to do, it doesn't seem to be fixed anytime soon. And hopefully you guys will be able to fix your fentanyl problem after a whole bunch of you suffer. Because you're going to have to suffer more. And keep on suffering. Because it only takes a lot of tragic events to happen before you actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. Alright guys, that's it for the video. Like, subscribe, share. And as always... Take care.